Father, we just thank you tonight. Uh, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory tonight for uh, all that you will say and all that you will do with us tonight. We, we thank you, Lord God, for the awesomeness of the Word of God and the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord God, for uh, the things that will be said tonight and, and just the uh, opportunity for us to elaborate on them and, and any questions that would be asked tonight, Lord, that uh, you would give us the wisdom to properly explain them, Lord God, that uh, those who are present here and abroad may be able to comprehend uh, exactly what is being said tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we just thank you. Uh, uh, we just thank you and we just praise you, God, for this Bible study tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, the way I want to start it tonight, let's, let's go over to Matthew chapter 8. And let's just look at that. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 8. And then we can, we can kind of move forward uh, with this whole uh, uh, study tonight. <clears throat> Actually, the conclusion of the, the concept of developing in God. Matthew chapter 8, it says, verse 8 said, the centurion, Jesus, verse 7 said, and Jesus said unto him, I'm going to come and heal him. And again, he said that because the centurion said that my servant is at home grievously vexed and tormented. And so, and so the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy. Uh, that you should come under my roof, uh, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. He said, because I'm a man under authority. So notice, the, the, the centurion, what he's saying, he's also implying certain things, okay? And he says, I am a man under authority. So the reason why Jesus doesn't have to come to his house, the reason why he doesn't see, have to see Jesus doing anything is because he has been hearing, and as a centurion, he no doubt has been observing the Lord. And he has been observing what the Lord has been doing, what the Lord has been saying, and he has been hearing and observing how that when he speaks, whatever he speaks to, it obeys him. Okay? This is... This is what the centurion is saying. So he says, I am a man under authority. So he, he's, he's equating what, what happens with Jesus to what he knows by experience happens with him. And so he says, I'm a man under authority, and I have soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goeth. Notice, he doesn't have to go check if he goes. He simply goes. And I say to another, come, and he what? He comes and he says, and he says, and to my servant, I tell him to do this, and he does it. Notice, notice in, in all three areas, none of them uh, none of them retaliated, fought against what he said, or or made a decision what they were or wasn't going to do. In all three circumstances, they listened. Okay? All three circumstances. Come, go, do this, and in all three circumstances, they listened. And they did not listen because of the pigmentation of the man's skin. They did not listen because of how tall he was, how broad his shoulders were. They did not listen to him because what color his eyes was, or his hair was, or who all he had as friends. Amen. This is not the reason why they listened to him. They listened to him for one simple, uh, one simple reason. The authority that he had. Amen. That's the only reason why they listened to him is solely based on the authority that he had. Are y'all with me? Amen. And so that's what the centurion soldier is saying. He says, I say to one goes and he what? No. Goes. I say to another come and he what? <laughs> and to another do this and he what? Yes. And so he said, when Jesus heard it, so, so he's telling, this is what he's telling Jesus. He's telling Jesus, Jesus, my servant is at home sick. I don't really know what's wrong with him, but he's at home sick. And I, I can't handle this. But I've been hearing about you. I've been seeing you. And I've been noticing that whenever you speak, the stuff listens. So what he's saying to Jesus is this. 
He says, I know you are a man under authority. And the same way when I say to, my, to the soldiers that's under me, when I speak to them, they obey me. He said, the same way they obey me when I speak to them, and they don't, I don't have to go and check if they're going to obey me. It's the same way when you speak, Jesus, that these things are going to listen to you. Amen. That's what he's saying to the man. Amen. Okay? And so he said, he said, when Jesus heard it, he said, he marveled and said unto them that followed, I have not found so great faith, no, not where? Not in Israel. So notice... Notice the, the, centurion, uh, the centurion acquainted the man's faith with the concept of being submitted to authority. Okay? The, the man's faith is acquainted to being submitted to authority. You say, how could that be? Well, look at the book of Jude. Just, just flip over to the book of Jude. Jude, and I'm going to read from chapter 1, which is, uh, Jude only has one chapter. Okay? And let me show you. Um, okay, let's see here. Let's see here. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Hold on a minute. Let me, let me find the scripture here. Okay, okay, no, that's not the verse that I want. Um, hmm. Okay, now I'll, I'll give I'll give it to you before the night the night ends. But it's in, it's in the book of Jude, the first chapter. But what 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 it says, uh, Jude said he said that that you and I are to contend for the faith. Okay, and so when when you and I are talking about the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, or we're talking about faith, faith does not simply speaks of you believing God for something. That's that's that that's that's part of the aspect of faith, but faith is the entirety of what you what Christ stands for and how you walk and live with Christ. It's it's everything that we do. And so when, when the Bible talks about contending for the faith, it's not talking about, about simply just, just believing God for a car or for something, but he's talking about contending for your faith, what you believe, what you stand for, what you know about the Lord Jesus Christ. So when Jesus looks at the, the centurion, he said, I have not found so great faith, not where? Not in Israel, because the man's faith was tied to his understanding of being submitted to authority. Okay? So now, what I said earlier before you all came in, is that what I want to do is just open the floor so that you all can ask questions. And we can deal with the topic of not only authority, but we've talked a lot about this. So you may have other things that you, you, you are, are wanting to bring out tonight, and we want to deal with that, and then we'll touch on a a few other things here as we go, okay? So if you if you got a question, just give me your hand so I, I can get your, you can get my attention. I know you have a question. If you are on Facebook and you have a question, the same thing, you can put it on the screen and I'll be more than happy to answer your question, okay? Yes, ma'am. I think it's 20. 20. Oh, glory. I knew it was in Jude. That's why I got some good scholars in here. Glory. Verse 20. Uh... Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, are you telling me it's verse 20? Jude, Jude 1 verse 20? Uh, can you read that? That you, beloved, build yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep it, yourselves in love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto your eternal life. That is not the one, but that's a good one. All right? Because notice he said, building up yourself in your most holy 
faith. So he's not just talking about you praying to believe God for something. He's talking about the entirety of your belief system. The entirety of it, okay? Uh, another good another good verse. Thank you, sister. That's a really good one. And another good one is look at Galatians 2 and verse 20. Galatians 2 and verse 20. Galatians 2 and verse 20. Again, uh, questions, all right? This is going to make it real nice if you all have questions, all right? Galatians 2 and verse 20, it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives where? So now, watch it now. He said, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live it by the faith of the Son of God. So notice this now. If you live life, and you and I live life by the faith, which is true. It is the, it is the faith. It is the entirety of what Christ has provided for us whereby we live. Is that right? Is that right? Amen. That's, that's the entirety of what Christ has provided through his death, burial, and resurrection that brought us again in fellowship with the Father, has given us an inheritance, and has provided everything that we have. It is the faith of the Son of God that's accomplished that for us, and thereby it is by that that we live. You see that? It is by that. So if you and I live by the faith, of the Son of God who loved us, the Bible said, the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. That's what you and I live by. And so we, we, we strengthen our belief system or our belief or our faith in what he has provided. You see, you see what I'm saying? So, so, he is the reason, and that is the reason why we live. That's, that's the faith. That's the entirety of it. It's the sum total of it all. Okay? So now, in, in, uh, if I live by the faith of Jesus, then I live by everything else of Jesus. Is that right? If I live by the faith of Jesus then the authority of Jesus is the authority that he has given to me. So it is his authority that I live by. But what we want as believers is not simply to have the authority. What we want as believers is that when we use it, it works. You see that? Because the centurion said to Jesus, I realize that you're a man under authority. The implication here then is that Jesus was under the authority of his father. John 5 says that he did nothing unless his father told him. He listened to nothing but what his father told him. So you and I understand that Jesus marched to the drumbeat of his father. So then uh, uh, Sheila, it is, it is safe to say and it is biblically safe to say According to John 14, that if Jesus listened to the Father, that means that anything the Father told him to do, that's what he did. Do you know that as many people as Jesus healed, he didn't heal everybody? You understand? Because though he possessed power, he listened to the Holy and it's what the Holy Spirit told him to do that's what he did. Okay? Now, the same way that he functioned is how you and I function. And so simply because we have power or authority, you can't just do what you want to do. <laughs> you see that? You, you can't just all of a sudden just want to do it because you want to do it. Okay? Now, even the very things that Christ died for you and I to have, we, we march to the leading of the Holy Spirit. See? And when you and I function under the leading of the Holy Spirit, then you will find that miracles happen without any strangest thing that you have to do. Because you are listening to the Spirit. And so, what do you, what do you say? Be healed. <laughs> 
or whether you scream it like me, it really doesn't matter. Because if it's what the Spirit is saying, if it's what God is saying, then it happens. And that's what the centurion was taking over. He said, you talk to trees, trees listen. You talk to demons, they listen. You talk to sickness, they listen. You talk to people. Anything you talk to, they listen. And he said, notice, the, the, he, he puts the, um, the emphasis not on what happens only, but his emphasis is what he's under. Because the centurion understands that you could not be doing this without being under someone that's releasing or causing all this power to happen. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. So when Jesus was listening to his father and obeying his father, these things were happening instantly. I hear a lot of people saying that, well, it takes time. That's a good question. It does. Uh, if you if you if you look at the uh, and it just all depends. It just all depends on how the Lord is going to do what He does. For instance, uh, the question was that since Jesus was listening to the Father and things happened instantly, the question was, the, uh, our sister said that she hears where a lot of people said it takes time. Well, if you, if you look, look at scriptures, there's, there, there's one guy that Jesus prayed for, and he said, I see men like trees, and Jesus prayed for him again. There's another uh, a person that Jesus gave them a word, and the Bible said, and as they went, they were healed. Uh, there are others that touched Jesus and instantly were healed. And the, 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 the idea is that God is the one doing this thing. He's the one orchestrating this. And so as God orchestrates it, then he is the one that performs it. But now, if you study these people that Jesus healed, most of them, Jesus, uh, Jesus pulled the faith out of them. You see that? Jesus calls them to do to exercise their own faith. There are some people that didn't that didn't happen to, but most of them, Jesus will cause them to exercise their faith. And as they exercise their faith, it happened. For instance, blind Bartimaeus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And so Jesus came to him. He said, What do you want? Are you serious? You asking me what do can't you see I can't see? No, no, no. He's not being funny. He's dealing with his faith. What is it you want from God? And the man said, I want to receive my sight. Jesus said, do you believe that I can do this? And he said, yes. He said, well, go on your way. As you have believed, be it unto. And you see it, you see it happening, right? So many of these people that you see that Jesus ministered to, you'll always see that Jesus would initiate it by some sort of a way, pulling their faith or causing them to believe. Because faith is what God moves by. So what she's saying in some areas is absolutely true. Because there are times where Jesus does it and is instantly. But there are times where it's not. There are times where it comes or as they are going, it happens. It will happen to us like that today. But but our sister, she's right in so many ways because many a times in our circles, it don't happen or is way down the road. And a lot of that, y'all may not agree with me and, 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 and the people, but a lot of that many times is our own faith. A lot of that is our own faith. A lot of that, and, and you say, well, Pastor, how, how do I know it? So, well, I know it's our own faith. Because many times when you pray for these people, listen to what they say. And, and as soon as they go off from where you prayed, their own words, you can tell. They don't believe they received anything. Or they, they're waiting for one day for God to give it to them. And a lot of times it's our own faith whereby these things are uh, sometimes take as long as it does, and it's not necessarily God that's holding it from us. Make sense? Uh, all right. Anybody else? All right. Yes. 
Yes. <coughs> okay, the question is. What about a person? They have strong faith. They have strong faith. Belief. Uh, belief. Okay. And they have seen proof of this. All right. Whether it was instant or down the line. Right. But in between, when we know who starts to cause problems and whatnot, they immediately get, I don't know, they get nervous, like, ooh, you know. Uh -huh. Is good, that was going to win, you know. Right. Even though they realize this, God has already done this. Christ has already done this. For right. Uh -huh. Seeing this over and over and over, <clears throat> and the slightest thing comes along, and there goes the doubt. Okay. What about the question? Is what about the people that have strong faith, or it is perceived that they have strong faith, but the enemy comes against them, and in some way or another seemingly convinces them that it's not going to happen and some kind of a way they lose their faith or they they don't believe. Well, uh, Matthew 16, again, uh, Peter, Jesus said to Peter, uh, J Peter said to Jesus, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Jesus said, come, Peter. Peter got out the boat and he's walking. He's not thinking he's walking. He's not hoping. He is walking on the water. So he's walking on the thing that a few minutes ago he was afraid of and it was threatened to kill him. While he's walking supernaturally on what threatened to kill him, he began to do what? Look at the wind and he looked at the Wave. So, so you and I can gather that when he was walking, his focus was on the word of God. Okay? And, and when he took his focus of the word of God or the promises of God and began to look at his circumstances around us and took those circumstances in through his eye gate and his ear gate, his faith began to wither. Same thing happens to us. And that's how sometimes a person could be strong and the next minute the stuff they, they, they're falling, they're sinking because they allow. The Bible put it this way. He said, those that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. You see, when you and I observe what's going on around us, then it's easy for those things to get in us or, or what the enemy is saying through them to take a hold of us and, and, and cause us to fear. And fear, fear means that you have faith in the opposite. That's what fear is. Okay? So if I fear I'm going to die, then I, I have placed confidence in the negative. Alright? And so, so when Peter did that, that's when he began to say, you say, how could you be so sure? Well, look what Jesus said. Jesus looked at Peter, grabbed him by the hand, for Peter said, Lord, I'm sinking. Hey, save me. Peter, Jesus grabbed him, and he said, Peter, why did you doubt? So doubt was the only reason why he sunk. Not God. If it was up to God, he would have stayed walking. All right? So if doubt is the only reason why he sunk, then that means to you and I that if there's anything we need to do is constantly fill our hearts with the word of God so that our hearts are filled with faith. Okay? You say, why is that? Because look at everything else that's constantly coming at us. And all these things are constantly coming and getting into eye gate and our ear gate. Right? And if there, there are not things of faith, then there are things of doubt. Is that right? And so, and so you and I have to continually fill our hearts with faith and with the Word. Constantly. You say, why constantly? Because you don't put it there one time and it just remains. It leaks out because you're using it every day. <laughs> okay? So you got to fill up your heart like you fill up your tank of gas. All right? That makes sense? Yes, sir. I have one question. Uh-huh. My question is referring back to the blind man. Okay, and question is to the blind man. Yes. Okay. But I wonder now, 
going to heaven when the Bible went to Jesus and he skipped and made mother put over his eyes. Uh -huh. And Jesus, Jesus asked us to do it twice before he could see. I think I think I, I referenced to that. That's it. The question is, why is it what, that? What caused, okay. Hold on. What caused him not to see the first time? What caused the blind man not to see right. the first time? Jesus repeated the uh, the mother again over mm -hmm. the eye, and then he see. Okay. Now I know. I know. Can can y'all find that for me? Uh, uh, can y'all find that for me? The blind. Just look. Just look in the Bible, look in the Bible for it, because I want to make sure that we answer that correctly. The, the, the person that Jesus, because they, they, there's a person that he spit in his eyes, there's another man that he, that he prayed for twice, because the, he prayed for the blind man, and the blind man says, I see trees, or he saw people as trees, and Jesus prayed for him again. That's the one. Okay, that one he told them to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. That one went and washed and he came back seeing. Came back seeing. Right. But there's one that he put them on and he had to do the second time before he could see. No, because no. No, there's, there, there's the one that he prayed for twice because when he saw him the first time, when he prayed for him the first time, he saw people as trees. And then he prayed for him the second time. Yeah, yeah, they, it just just mixed up, not confused, just mixed up, and he and, and he's basically asking why, but he just had it a little mixed up. The the guy with the, the the mud that he spit and made clay out of the mud and put on his eye, that guy he sent him to the pool of Siloam. He washed and he came back seeing. The guy that he prayed for, uh, uh, I think it was in Jericho, that when he saw, he said, "I see men like trees." Well, well that's the one actually. Right. Uh, he had also the second time right. before he could see. Right. Was it a doubt with the blind man or what caused him want to see the first time that Jesus prayed for him? I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it was doubt. I, I would just say that uh that's really just kinda how it happened. Even Jesus had to pray the second time. You know, uh uh I mean I, I guess you could look at it you can look at it that way, is that even Jesus, sometimes just because you have to pray twice doesn't mean, that's, you know, Jesus had to pray twice for him. I'm not sure why he saw men like trees, but when Jesus prayed, he was not seeing everything the way he was supposed to. And then again, he probably was, because we are trees. The Bible said we are trees, we are the planting of the Lord. But the, the guy's focus was not in tune. So Jesus prayed for him again. And sometimes, you know, for whatever reason uh, that happens, I will have to look at that, Pops, and, and get back with you and see if there, if there was any doubt there. But this, the scripture doesn't mention that the guy was doubting why he saw that way. It doesn't mention that. Like taking the second person. Right. It doesn't right. mention that. Well, we can, we can all, we can, we can, we can always go back and look at that, and we'll, we'll pull that one up, okay? When, when he, when he saw men like trees, just put that in your, in your search engine, and you'll see that. Now, look at Matthew ten. Look at Matthew ten, and and, and let's, uh, I, I really want us to just deal with questions, okay, tonight. Look at Matthew ten, and we'll kind of try to wrap it up here, and, and entertain any other question. But in Matthew ten, look at this. If you and I live by the same faith of Jesus, then the church lives by the same authority of Jesus. You live by the same power of Jesus. You say, how do you know that? Because in Acts chapter 2, Jesus sent us the Holy Ghost. It's the same power he had. Okay? Matthew 28, he says, all authority has been granted unto me in heaven and earth. So I'm going to give you that same what? I'm going to give you that same authority. You follow me? Okay, so so if, if you and I live by the same faith of the Lord Jesus, you live by the same authority of Jesus. And look at Matthew 10, verse 1. It says, and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he did what? He gave them power against what? 
Okay, now, now notice, that's the only thing Jesus gave us power against. He gave us power against the enemy of our soul. The enemy of the human race are demons. The enemy of the human race is the devil and demons. Right? Y'all agree? That's the enemy of the human race. Sin, sickness, disease, weak, all these things come out of sin. They are not born from God. God doesn't give them to us. That is the enemy of our soul, right? So Jesus did what? He gives us power over what? Unclean spirit to do what with them? To cast them out and to do what? And all manner of, just like he did. Okay? Just the same thing he did is what he has given you and I authority to do. Okay? Because you cannot, I'm, I'm going to come to you. You cannot, listen to me, you and I cannot do the things that God wants us to do without dealing with these opposing forces that's going to come against us. Yes, ma'am. Natural. Uh, the the question is: do, do some things take more time to heal than others? Of course. Uh, right. Of course. Uh, what you're going to find in the scriptures is, and you see it even with Jesus, there is what you call miracle healing. That means that if you broke a bone, okay, if God instantly heals that, that's a miracle of healing. That means that you didn't have to undergo the process of healing. Okay? And then you have what you call healing over a period of time, which means you undergo a process. It doesn't happen instantaneously. It happens over a period of time. The person begins to amend or they begin to get well. Okay? And again, all those things, God determines how he wants to do it. And he does it for his own purpose. Your problem and my problem is not to worry about that or to wonder about it, your challenge in mind is to furnish faith. See that? When you furnish faith, and you believe that it's done, then it is, it doesn't matter if you still see the stuff on you. Case in point, this lady had a, uh, uh, she had a belly, looked like she was having triplets. And and she went down to, to the altar, and she asked for prayer, and they prayed for her. And she came back from the altar, and her belly was still big. And she said, Jesus, thank you for healing me. Thank you, Jesus. And she just started thanking him as though... <laughs> as though... <laughs> As though her stomach was normal. And look here. She did it so much it irritated her husband. And he got so irate. That he just went off on this one. He went off on his wife. He said you fool. Don't you see your belly still big. And you keep saying Jesus thank you. I'm healed. And all this other stuff. And doing other stuff. And making yourself and me look bad. And he was just. I rate with the woman. And she just kept on thanking Jesus. Jesus, thank you, I'm healed. And so what they did is she had to go to the hospital because now they're going to do surgery. And she just said, Lord, thank you for healing me. <laughs> I know, it's uh, but you see, that's the thing, is that when you and I are in faith, as far as God's concerned, it's done. What, what, what is not your business and not my business is how God chooses to do it. It's not your business. Your brain and mind is too small to understand that. God has his reasons and purpose. In this case with this woman, God wanted to do more than heal her. He wanted to minister to other people. So while she's thanking Jesus for healing her, 
Her husband is irate. He's at the point of leaving this world because he thinks her elevator doesn't go all the way up to the top because her stomach is still big. She's making herself look bad. He looks bad. Everybody, and he just feels like she is a big fool, but she just kept on thanking the Lord. So they had her scheduled for surgery, and she just thanked the Lord. And Lord, thank you for healing me. And so she's now in the hospital thanking the Lord. All the... um. Nurses and everybody is here in this world. They probably thought she was, you know, she her her bread didn't get baked properly and all this stuff. And, stuff. and so watch this now. She goes under anesthesia. So now she's out. They wheeled her in to the operating room. This woman got this big old belly, right? And as soon as the surgeon put the knife to her stomach, her stomach said, shh. Just like you took air out of a balloon and went right back down to normal. That's exactly right. So, so she, she's in the recovery room and she wakes up and the nurses are crying. They're all giddy. The whole hospital is in an uproar. And so when she wakes up, the nurses tell her what happened. And she said, Jesus, I know. No, you did it, Jesus. So, so now, watch this. God is not only interested in you and your well-being. God is interested in other people. And God will use your plight to turn other people to him. You understand? And so you can't allow, because God doesn't move on your timetable, to make you feel like God don't care about you or he's not going to do it. That has nothing to do with it. Are you listening to me? Because listen to me, listen to me. I either make, I, I either make a, a, a strong, um, uh, what is this? Um, uh, let's see. I either show a strong example of my faith before others by standing in faith in the midst of my plight, and I die in faith. That is still a huge witness. Are you listening to me? Or I stand in faith, and God does it, and he ministered to the people. Either way, either way it goes, I make a tremendous witness to those who hear me. I wonder what, I wonder what you think happened when they marched Paul down. To the, to the uh, place where they're going to cut his head off. And they see this man marching down there with absolute confidence in his God. And he dies. They chop his head off. And this man is totally confident. Polycarp. I love to read about Polycarp. He's an, he's an old saint uh, uh, in the, in, uh, somewhere between 1st and 3rd century. Polycarp. And Polycarp, Polycarp was a man that served Jesus and lived for 82 years young. And and Polycarp, uh, they told Polycarp, you've got to give up your faith. And Polycarp looked at them and he said, I'm not going to do that. He said, I've, I've served them for 82 years and he's never done me anything wrong. Why, why should I do that now? So you know what they did to Polycarp? They took Polycarp and they put him on a, on a cross. And they lit fire under Polycarp. And you know what Polycarp did? Polycarp began to sing while they were burning him to the stake. Are you hearing me? The, the, the evil soldiers got so upset that they threw a spear into him. And according to the writings, his blood gushed out and put the fire out. Polycarp was dead, but he was dead in faith. You, you, you understand? In, in other words, listen to me, beloved. God never said that you and I are going to live forever here and now. All right? No matter how many times God heals you, ultimately we're going to heal. We're going to leave. It's how you leave. See? It's how you leave. It's not the matter that you lived 30 years and you died. That may have been God's plan for your life. It's how you died. See? See? And so, and so Polycarp died. Why? He died in faith. And people turned to the Lord as a result. You know, th this stuff is bigger than you and I.
God's got his plans that far surpasses what you and I can articulate or even imagine. But the thing is that you and I fulfill the plan and the will of God and understand that you and I have authority, but the authority that you have and I have is to be under the governance of the Holy Spirit and those who God put in your life, you and I are not free to do what we want to do. We are free to follow the Lord. And it's under His authority that now we exercise what? His authority. You see that? It's under the control of the Spirit that you can exercise God's authority because you are listening to what God says for you to do. Am, am I making sense? Am I making sense? Question. No questions? Okay. Look at Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. You have authority. Okay. You and I have authority. It's not that you don't have authority. Okay. But... But again, the more you grow in the Lord and you walk in the Lord, your life is not your life to live it the way you want to. Christ is the one that lives through you. Yes, ma'am. I have a testimony. You have a testimony. Today, okay. I called the patient with test results. Okay. She had an aneurysm. Today she called the patient with test results. She had an aneurysm. And this was to check up, an annual checkup. Uh-huh. So you have to watch it to see if it grows. Right. It's gone. It's gone. The aneurysm is gone. Jesus healed me. Right. And and I think it shocked her that I agreed with her. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the aneurysm in the brain, uh, the lady came back, I assume it's a lady, came back for the checkup, and when she had the checkup, it was totally gone. She started crying, she said, and the lady cried and said, I knew Jesus healed me. Uh, you see, you see, what you learn as you walk with God is you can know things two ways. You can know things logically in your head, and you can know things in your spirit that your head don't agree with yet. You understand? We, we say, I got a hunch. That's what we call it. Now we, I taught on this a while ago. But, but it is actually, you're getting information in your spirit. She knew God healed her. Even though our mind may have told her all this stuff here that the doctors were doing. Your, your challenge and my challenge is to learn how to believe what God said. Even though everything naturally is telling you opposite. See? <clears throat> and the more we learn to do that, then the more you'll see that the stuff God said he'll do for you, he's already done it. See? The, the more I'm in this book. I understand one thing. I don't have to twist God's hands. I don't have to I don't have to try I don't have to plead with God, beg him and make him. He the one that wrote the book. So if he wrote the book, he must want to do what he said. I don't have to pry God. I don't have to pry him and beg. Him. I don't have to do none of that. I have to learn how to trust him. Okay? So when you and I do that, then what you're going to find is the same authority, okay? The same authority that flows out of the life of Jesus, the same authority or the same power that flows from the throne of God to do the stuff that Jesus said to do is the same authority that flows on your behalf. Same authority. There's not a different authority. There's not a different power. There's not a different spirit. It's the same Authority. That authority in Christ, that same authority in Christ, when Jesus rose from the dead, the demons know it. Satan knows it. You, you, don't, you don't even have to have conversation with devils. They know it's a law in the spirit. And when you accepted Christ, you became his child, then you became an inheritor of that same authority. And when you speak in his name, 
the devil already know he got to obey. His thing is he's be he be praying bad English, but you get me. He be praying you don't know it. And he be praying you don't believe it. That's what he praying about. If there is such a thing as him praying. Let me let me read this and we're done. Verse 1, it said, Now Peter and John went up to, to the temple, the hour of prayer being the ninth hour, and a certain man laid from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. He probably was around when Jesus was, was the healing folk, that same guy. To ask alms of them that enter into the temple, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked an arm, and Peter, looking or fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. So he focused the man's attention on him, and then Peter said, silver and gold I don't have. Now, it don't mean Peter was broke, all right? It just means probably at that moment he didn't have no money on him, right? He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee, in the what? Jesus. Of what? Absolutely. What do what? Right. Now notice, Peter and all these apostles, they prayed like Jesus taught them. They didn't, notice, Peter didn't say, oh Lord, please heal them. Peter didn't do that. Because what he was doing, he was, he was exercising authority in Jesus no, wait, 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 Jesus' name, but in Jesus' stead. In other words, Jesus was not physically there, but Peter was in Jesus' stead. When you and I are saved, we become God's children, right? When you become God's child, you are no longer doing business of your own accord the way you think it ought to be done. You are listening to your father just like Jesus. And your father has certain things for you to do. During each day, the, the, it, all the, it doesn't matter, whatever it is. When you and I are ministering in Jesus' name, you are not, you are not a flunky trying to hope and to pray that something happens. You are standing in God's stead. I, I don't know how else to say. You, in other words, you are standing there on the behalf of Jesus. You follow me? Peter, Peter, when, when Peter was ministering to the man, it's just like Jesus standing there in front of the man. And Peter said, in the name or in the stead, in the power, in the authority of Jesus Christ, get up. Do you understand that? The name won't work for you if you don't live in it. You understand? That's the only difference. If you really want to look at it, the name doesn't work for folks who don't live in it. Jesus didn't call you and I to be part-time Christians. If you're a Christ, if you're a Christian, then that this has become your life. That's it. And so you it don't mean you're perfect. You you walk with him, your heart is his, and you seek to please him. You walk with Jesus, right? To whatever degree it is, you're growing, you're learning, but you're walking with him. When you pray for folk, you got to understand. I, I think sometimes it's when we don't understand these things, it doesn't work for us because we don't understand or we don't have faith in it. it Jesus ain't here. He's not on Bobcock Street. You're not going to find him walking on Babcock or on Main Street. You're going to find you walking. He walking in you. And so if people need help, he's going to work through you to help them. And the only way you can help them is you have to have a power that's outside of this world. And you have to have an authority that's outside of this world. Because in this world, demon spirits govern this system. And so you're going to have to have a power that's outside of this stuff in order to control and dominate them. And that's why you have the power of the Holy Spirit. So when I'm under authority, then stuff that's out of place have to listen to you. There is no such thing. What if the devil don't want to listen? There, there, there's no such thing. Jesus said, in my name, you will cast out. They have to listen. The sickness has to. 
listen to you. They, 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 you get what I'm trying to say. They just have to listen. Are you hearing me? That's how you have to believe. There ain't no such thing as, well, Pastor, what if I pray and this stuff don't want to listen? Ain't no such thing. Fill yourself with the word. Ain't no such thing. It don't listen if you don't believe. There's no authority coming out if you don't believe. There's no power coming out if you don't believe. Or if you have more unbelief than faith, then it's not, ain't, ain't nothing happening. But, but sister, if you just simply believe what Jesus said, and just do what he said, and expect what he said, to, because the devil knows you. And he knows you got the power. He, know, he ain't guess. He know you got it. You belong to Christ. He just hoping and praying you don't know it. And if you don't know it, if you don't believe it, then it doesn't work. Because it works by faith. It's the only way it works. Jesus knew you and I have to live in this world. He knew you would face demons, you'll face challenges, you'll face circumstances. Jesus knew all of that. He knew you need jobs, you need houses, you need money, you need cars. Jesus knew all of these things. So don't, don't think God don't know what. God knows exactly what you need. And if you want to know the truth, he gave you everything you need to have everything you need. And you just have to learn how to work it. Amen? Amen. I'm not done. I quit. <laughs> I can't ever seem to get done. All right? But but again, this goes with the same thing, being under authority. So, so you know, if you ever watch people, if they're not under authority, whether natural authority or spiritual authority, they're not going to exercise authority because a rebel cannot cast out rebels. You understand? A kid. Like Jesus said, a kingdom divided said can't stand. If you and I are out of line, it's not going to work until we are in line. Does that make sense? All right, I'm done. Any questions? Any questions? Because we're getting ready to. <laughs> you can take your knife and forks out. Glory to God forever. Any questions? Any questions? No one, no one on, on uh, Facebook gave us a question, so we're good. No questions? Okay, well, you know what? Look, man. I love all you guys out there. We, we all here. We all love you. Uh, and uh, we, we are believing God's very best for you. And so I want to encourage you. Tune in on next week. We won't be live. Well, we'll probably be live. We'll be uh, uh, ministering at a conference next week. So you'll probably see it live. But uh, we want you to be encouraged. And we want you to know that God, the Holy Spirit, loves you. And God has your best interest at heart. So whatever you're dealing with, whatever your situation or circumstances are, God cares about you and God will deliver you. So I'm going to ask everybody here to just join with me in prayer. And we're going to believe for you and for whatever it is that you're dealing with, that the power of the living Christ will minister to you right where you are. Father, I thank you for my brother. I thank you for my sisters. I thank you for all those who are listening to us tonight. Lord, I know that there's no distance in prayer, no distance. And God, I thank you for touching them. Thank you for ministering life to them. I thank you for healing them in Jesus' name. Body parts that are not working, that they will function. Uh, situation and circumstances that is working against them, Lord, that you will transform and change these things in the name of Jesus. We believe right now. We release our faith in agreement with them. That, Lord, you'll minister life, you'll bless them, you will enrich them. You'll, uh, you'll open jobs and opportunities for them, Lord. You'll cause those who are without to be with, Lord God. You, you, Lord, you bless your people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for it, and we bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, we love you. God bless you. Remember, the, the power of the seed is not in the size but it's in the contents. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you on next week. God bless. Bye-bye.